This example is going to use the coordination one template and prepare a model for product L in the product sales data data set. The idea behind this model is to coordinate the efforts of a wholesaler, a distributor, and the factory and look at what happens if they operate in either the decentralized or centralized mode. So first we're going to examine the decentralized mode. Decentralized means that the three parties in the supply chain just make their decisions sequentially, which is much like you made the decisions when you played the beer game. What we have here in the template is all of the prior assumptions for product L, and these were used in previous examples in the textbook. And so none of these are any different um, than, than the ones that we've used in the previous examples. That is for the wholesaler. For the distributor, now that we're considering three of the different uh, partners in the supply chain, we see here that the distributor has their own fixed ordering cost and their own unit holding cost. And you can see by the subscript D how we'll notate those. And then the factory also has its own fixed ordering cost and its own uh, annual unit holding cost. And so those have been included. These assumptions have been provided by the distributor and factory and are included here in the template. So what we need to do is complete the remainder of the template here and go ahead and find this decentralized mode of operation. And we discuss uh, as we go how the decentralized mode works. So we need here the mean lead time demand. So that will be the mean daily demand times the mean lead time. And this round function will simply um, help us to get an integer answer, which is easier to deal with when we build our expected shortage model. And then we know that the effective maximum of lead time demand because of the property of the normal distribution is the mean plus three times the standard deviation. Now we're going to initially build a fill rate model for this example. So we're going to build a model that where we assume that we would like to meet a fill rate of 99%. So I went ahead and just put 99% in for the desired fill rate, but we could use, run this same model as a service level model where we had a desired service level. But since we're not doing that right now, the zero here on this line just simply means we're ignoring service level for the moment. We'll be able to see what the service level is um, in this case. So then we'll put uh, just some starting values in for order quantity and reorder point, something like 2000 will be fine. And then um, <clears throat> for the moment, we'll put starting values for the distributor order multiple. Let's try three and factory order multiple, which we'll explain as we go. Okay, so the safety stock then would be the reorder point minus the mean lead time demand. And then we'll go ahead and enter a, a formula for the service level at the optimal solution. We're not targeting a service level in this example, but it doesn't mean we couldn't do that at some point with this model, and it doesn't mean we're not interested in it. So that will be the area under the normal distribution up to the reorder point of 2000. And then we have the mean and the standard deviation of lead time, and we choose true for cumulative distribution. Okay, now we'll fill in the fill rate formula when we are able to get the expected shortage values entered. So let's enter the expected shortage values. We need to enter values for the expected shortage that are between the lead time demand. So we put lead time demand first. And then we list all the values by adding one on each row up to the effective maximum. So we'll just copy this down. So this has been copied down all the way to 2380, which is the effective maximum. 
and the row is 645. Now we enter a shortage value. So the shortage is going to be the lead time demand minus the reorder point. But we limit that to zero. So if uh, there's a case where the lead time demand minus the reorder point is negative, we don't want to have a negative shortage. So the max function with the zero um, accomplishes this. So if we click on the lower right corner, we can copy that down. And then the formula for probability is already entered in the template. But this is the probability in a one unit interval around um, the lead time demand value that we're considering here. And there's a logical if function here that simply says we'll put a zero in for the probability if lead time demand is greater than uh, this current uh, effective maximum of lead time demand. Now typically we just copy it down to the correct rows, but this will just make sure that we include the right values for the probabilities. Okay, so we have those probabilities. Now what we would do is calculate the expected shortage. And the expected shortage is the sum product of all the shortage values. and all the probabilities that are associated with those. So that is the sum product, and that'll be the expected shortage. Now we use the expected shortage to calculate the fill rate. And so the fill rate at the optim optimal solution is calculated as 1, which represents 100% times the expected order cycles per year multiplied by the expected shortage per cycle. This expected cycles per year is empty right now, but we'll be sure to fill in that formula, and that will make the fill rate formula correct. And then we divide that by the annual demand. Now, the, per, the, the number here after the minus sign is simply the percentage of orders that are not filled on time. So 100% minus that is the percentage of orders that are filled on time. Now, if we look at the expected order cycles per year, that would be the annual demand divided by the order quantity. And now we should get a result in our fill rate at optimal solution that's not 100%. And then to get the annual ordering cost, we multiply the number of orders times the fixed order and cost for the wholesaler. In this section, these are all the cost for the wholesaler. Our average inventory for the wholesaler is the order quantity times 0 0.5. We can reference our safety stock. And so then our annual holding cost is comprised of both the average inventory and the safety stock added together. And then those two values multiplied by the annual holding cost per unit, which is on line 12. For this example, we're going to leave out the shortage costs for now. We could certainly add them, but we're going to use the fill rate model. So we'll go ahead and add together the annual order and cost and holding costs. So if we wanted to use a, a, a expected shortage cost model in this template, we could add in that line. The cycle time is the order quantity divided by the average mean daily demand. Now, what we can do is go ahead and use solver in this case to um, look at the solution for the wholesaler. In the decentralized mode, the wholesaler is going to find its solution first before the distributor in the factory. 
So we can go ahead. We don't have these costs filled in for the distributor factory. We'll have to do that, but for right now, we can first examine the wholesaler solution. So in Solver, in the decentralized mode, the objective is the total annual cost for the wholesaler, and we want to minimize that. And the changing cells are the two decision variables that represent the wholesaler, and those are the order quantity and reorder point. We'll put some constraints in. We'll put a constraint that the order quantity is greater than or equal to one, just to keep it from causing an error at zero. And we'll put a constraint in that the fill rate at the optimal solution is greater than or equal to the desired fill rate. Go ahead and put in the service level constraint. The service level at the optimal solution is greater than or equal to the desired service level, but really we're not considering that right now. Uh, so that's just zero. So this constraint will automatically be met. And those constraints should be adequate to give us our solution. And so we see that our solution is 903 for the order quantity and 2018 for the reorder point, which gives us exactly a fill rate of 99%. So that concludes the wholesaler portion of the model. And we'll return and examine the solution for the distributor and for the factory.